Welcome back to another video brought to you by ISCA Engineering. We are continuing our series in motors and control systems. In the last video, we covered manual and magnetic motor starter. In this video, we'll be looking at transformer principles. We'll look into their operation as well as their voltage, current, and turns ratio. And then we'll finish this video by looking at how transformers are rated. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on future videos. And while you're at it, hit the thumbs up. Let's get started. What is a transformer? A transformer is used to transfer AC energy from one circuit to another. The two circuits are connected by a magnetic field instead of a conductive path. This transfer of energy can increase or decrease the voltage but the frequency will stay the same on both sides of the circuit. Also, a transformer doesn't change power levels between circuits. If you put 10 kilovolt amp into a transformer, you will get 10 kilovolt amp out. There are losses, but the losses are very minimal and can almost be ignored. The average efficiency of a transformer is well over 90%, and that can be attributed to the fact that a transformer has no moving parts. Note, a transformer can only be operated using AC voltage. This is because no voltage is induced if there is no change in the magnetic field. Using a constant DC voltage to operate a transformer will cause a large amount of DC current to flow, which can destroy the transformer. Here is a simple version of a single phase transformer. The transformer consists of two electrical conductors. One is called the primary winding and the other is called the secondary winding. The primary winding is fed from a varying alternating current which then creates a varying magnetic field around it. The principle of mutual inductance states that the secondary winding which is in this varying magnetic field will have a voltage induced into it. For simplicity, a transformer in its most basic form is made up of a core primary winding secondary winding, and enclosure. The core provides a path for the magnetic lines of force. The primary winding receives energy from the source. The secondary winding receives energy from the primary winding and then delivers it to the load. And then enclosure protects the components from dirt, moisture, and mechanical damage. The operation of a transformer can be summarized as follows. If the primary has more turns than the secondary, you have a step-down transformer. This type of transformer reduces or steps down the voltage. If the primary has fewer turns than the secondary, you have a step-up transformer. This type of transformer increases or steps up the voltage. If the primary has the same turn as the secondary, the primary incoming voltage will be the same as the outgoing secondary voltage. This transformer is known as an isolation transformer. In certain exceptional cases, one large coil can serve as the primary and secondary. This is the case with auto transformers. Like mentioned earlier in the video, the primary volt amperes, VA, or kilovolt amperes, KVA, of a transformer will be equal to that of the secondary minus the small amount of losses. What is the turns ratio in a transformer? The ratio of turns in the primary winding to those in the secondary winding is what's known as the turns ratio. For example, if a transformer has a 4 to 1 turns ratio, then for every 4 turns on the primary winding there will be 1 turn in the secondary winding. Inputting a 480 volts AC into the primary winding will produce a 120 volts AC output on the secondary winding. The exact opposite is true for a transformer with a 1 to 4 turns ratio. This transformer would have one turn on the primary for every four turns in the secondary. Inputting a 120 volts AC to the primary winding will produce 480 volts AC at the secondary winding. The actual number of turns is not important, only the turns ratio. The voltage ratio of an ideal transformer, one with no losses, is directly related to the turns ratio, while the current ratio is inversely related to the turns ratio. Here is a table with some common single phase transformer turns ratios based on primary and secondary voltage ratings. 
Here we have a step-down transformer with, let's say, 1,000 turns on the primary winding and 250 turns on the secondary. As a step-down transformer converts high voltage, low current power into low voltage, high current power, a larger diameter wire is used in the secondary winding to handle the increase in current. The primary winding, which doesn't have to conduct as much current, can be made of a smaller diameter wire. Who is ready to do some calculations? Let's put what we learned so far into practice. Here is an example of how the previous equation can be applied. We'll do calculations using this example. To find the turns ratio, we divide the number of turns on the primary by the number of turns on the secondary. In this example, the turn ratio of this transformer is a 4 to 1. Assuming we know the voltage of one of the windings and the turns ratio, the voltage of the other winding can be calculated. Also, if the current of one of the windings and turns ratio are known, the current of the other winding can be calculated. The equations that were used in this step-down transformer circuit are the same equations that would be used for a step-up transformer. A transformer automatically adjusts its primary input current as needed to meet the requirements of the output or load current. If there is no load current connected to the secondary, only a small amount of current will flow through the primary winding. This is known as the magnetizing current. Transformers are typically designed so the power consumed by the magnetizing current is only enough to overcome the losses in the iron core and in the resistance of the wire with which the primary is wound. If the secondary of the transformer becomes overloaded or shortened, the primary current will also increase dramatically. It is very important to connect a fuse in series with the primary in order to protect both the primary and secondary circuit from excessive current. The basic rule for transformers rated over 600 volts requires them to have primary and secondary protection. For transformers with 600 volts or less, protection of the secondary is not required, but it's good practice to protect it. Just like horsepower ratings designate the power capacity of an electric motor, a transformer's kilovolt ampere rating indicates its maximum power output capacity. To calculate a transformer's rating, the following equations are used. Typically, the power rating on a transformer can be found on the transformer's nameplate. Transformers are rated in volt amperes, VA, or kilovolt amperes, KVA. Volt amperes is the total power supplied to the circuit from the source and includes real, watts, and reactive, VAR, power. Usually the primary and secondary full load currents are not given. In this case, the volt ampere rating is given along with the primary voltage. The primary full load amps can be determined using the rating and primary voltage. Let's look at some examples of how full load currents are calculated. Here we have a single phase 10 kilovolt amp transformer rated 480 volts primary and 120 volts secondary. With the information given and using the full load current equation, the primary and secondary full load current are calculated as follows. Next, we have a three phase 25 kilovolt amp transformer rated 480 volts primary and 208 volts secondary. Using the full load current equation, the primary and secondary full load current are calculated as follows. This concludes the topic of transformer principles. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. In the next video, we'll look into single phase and three phase transformer connections. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at ISCA underscore engineering underscore. The links will be provided in the description. There we post daily content on electricity, controls, automation, and much more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.